Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Savage Saturdays here on the Drinking Bros podcast. I'm your host, Derek White. Joining me, as always, it's Owen. It's Owen. We just wanted to take a second and let you know that today's episode of Savage Saturday is sponsored by GhostBed. GhostBed's been a loyal sponsor of the Drinking Bros podcast for over four years. Everybody loves GhostBed. I love GhostBed. I'm the proud owner of two ghost bed mattresses and two pillows and right now if you buy a mattress from ghost bed you get two free pillows and if you go to ghostbed.com slash drinking bros you can save 25 percent. that's ghostbed.com slash drinking bros grab yourself a mattress two free pillows get some good sleep enjoy the show we're back how's it going i'm doing good how are you i'm doing great yeah part two how are you, Stacy? Good. Thanks for asking, Owen. You're welcome. <laughs> he's 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 trying. You know what he's doing? He's trying real hard to get that fucking title of co-host. Uh, That's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, he asked me how I was doing, so, so I want to make our guests feel welcome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like job of a yeah. co-host <laughs> and um, the job of an almost co-host. <laughs> um, the, another gift I got recently from Stacy was this also Father's Day. That was Father's Day, yeah. Yeah, so I got this knife because I kept playing with a knife on the fucking podcast. Yeah. She just thought it would be more convenient for me to do like this. It's safer for Owen's face to have it like bound to your hand. I'm all about safety. Yeah. Until I start spinning it (laughs) like a revolver. Yeah. We'll we'll get there once I get more comfortable. I'm sitting directly across from you, but good thing there's cameras and And I'm not trying to make a statement. Like, I'm, I'm a cool guy here, but I always... I point with shit, you right. know, and I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, but Stacy got me this new knife. Where'd you get this? Uh, the tactical store down the street. Where's the tact? Is it Frontier? Yeah, Frontier. Oh, no shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I went inside. I actually, so I had to wait outside because you know of all the rules these days and you can only have so many people. I waited outside in the 110 degree heat for Yo. forever. Well, maybe it was like five minutes, but it felt like forever. Felt like at least an hour. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so I I was doing something with you and I, I was trying to like keep it a secret that I was just standing outside for effing ever mm. and sweating. And I can't remember what it was. I don't remember. Anyways, I was trying not to show you that I was standing outside and sweating. Okay. I can't remember what it was. Anyway. Uh, do they have a range in there? Not that know? I yeah. saw. I think the store is just like a storefront. Okay. I don't know. Maybe they do. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. know. We need we need some new fucking home defense guns around here. Yeah. yeah that's that's something we've really lacked. Or I used to be really big into just fucking defense, you yeah. know. But one of my sort of <clears throat> move on measures, you know, it's it's difficult to move on post military yeah. for everybody. But you know, it's a, it's a, it, it, in my case, and people like me, it was like wounded in combat, didn't want to get out of the military. It's difficult to move on. So like when I first got out, or you know, after I got shot, I was like, I didn't. I always had a f- massive first aid kit in my yeah. car. I always carried a knife. Yeah, had a fucking pistol. Yep. You know, and just as like trying to move on with my life, I sort of abandoned a lot of these things. But it's at the point now, like we have, we have guns here, but we, we I think, yeah. you know, we need a shotgun and After a rifle. After work yesterday, I went to the BX and I walked past the little like armory section and mm-hmm. I was like, oh, this is a good place to get it because probably no taxes, right? Oh yeah, or no like, tax. Yeah, mm-hmm. so. And I can get my Traeger there. <laughs> you can, you can get your Traeger no taxes. at the BX. Exactly. Working on it. Exactly. So we're Working looking at AFIs. Getting there, getting there, getting ready, getting ready mentally. Feeling it? To drop that. Mm-hmm. Feeling ready. That amount of money. I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait. We're going to yeah. be eating We're going to be eating good, Stacey. <laughs> I can wait. I can wait. Dang. I yeah. can wait. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, um, last week we talked about recovery we started talking about recovery there's so much to talk about brushed the wave tops yeah we 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 we, if you haven't listened go back episode 21 we talked about what i think is the most important part of recovery is is like how you approach your training Mm -hmm. because you're setting yourself up for success or failure right there yep you know so you know actually that's true too because your recovery is based off of your training. Your output, too. yeah. Right, so you can be like smart about you, that or fucking dumb. Yeah, you are what I would consider an elite athlete. 
Thanks, babe. So, <laughs> like, your recovery is going to take longer, and it's going to look different than mine, who's just trying mm-hmm. to be an active mom. So I'm not going to be, like, taking as many naps as Derek, although I would like that. Okay. How often do I nap anymore? So that's what I wanted Once to talk a month. about. I, I, yeah, that's what I want yeah. to talk about. You should be napping. Yeah, and guess what we're doing instead? Oh, you kind of switched it right there. So instead of instead of instead of a degree in psychology, in, in, instead of <laughs> hey, I dropped out from my major in psychology. Okay, oh, same. You're smarter. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, uh, um, no, um, yeah. I so that that's that's ironic, right? We're um, doing this podcast at a time where I sh- could or should be napping. Mm-hmm. Could be, but we're teaching people that. I, I'm a, uh, I'm a, I've always believed in naps and I yeah. can nap anywhere, but life is just bit. So yeah. Okay. The, the, the changes in our lives. Right. So like my recovery. So your competition is in, mm-hmm. yeah, we're, we're needing to get serious here. So, but, yeah, but I got, I have, I know, but I, I know, but I have all these new responsibilities too. It's, it. it's really fucking. So I'm right there with the people who are struggling. And so my recovery used to, my whole life for a, for up until maybe a year ago revolved around training and recovery. Mm-hmm. It was about kind of like being an amputee. I used to I used to only spend 6 to 8 hours a day wearing my leg. Yeah. It's like if I wasn't at training and I didn't have to go somewhere, I would be at home resting my stump. Yeah. Letting the skin breathe and things like that, but having twins. Yeah. Now I'm I'm honestly in my leg now like 14 I just 16 hours a day. Yeah, I was yep. thinking about that because he has the wheelchair in the garage and it's We haven't it's used not, it in forever. Oh, at Can't least anymore. a year, at least. Yeah, I re- well, I remember sort Once of the like pushing the walking, stroller. I don't want her doing everything. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. <laughs> it's, I mean, yeah, it depends. Like as we get closer to your competition, I think we do need to think about using the wheelchair more. Well, I think one August, it's like yeah. shut down. Right When's after the comp- Wyoming. August 29th is my 29th. competition. Okay. Yeah, so, so that's so that's the that's the weird thing. And this is a new thing I'm learning and that's in this training cycle um it's forcing me to grow as far as I have to be really I have to be really proactive all the time cuz I I'm not just training full time trying to do as best as I can recovery wise, but yeah. we have all these new business ventures ventures, and we're still trying to enjoy yeah and all all these things you know and so it's like but yeah so i wonder sometimes um so just just to make sure like the the stage is set context is clear i consider myself a professional athlete yeah yep i hold a belt i'm a champion but it's not world renowned or anything like that like the being an amp an, an adaptive athlete is a really weird thing i put the same amount of time and effort and care as <clears throat> like matt fraser fucking conor mcgregor things like that and i wonder sometimes are they shutting down and spending when they're in prep do they you know isolate and it's just training focused or do they have all these distractions? I no. have so many fucking distractions well, right they, now. It's they talk about their like they go to camps. Mm-hmm. Like I know with MMA fighters at least, like they have their training camp and like oh right, like Tito Ortiz used to go his training camp Connor used to be up in here. the mountain where it's soul Connor focus. Comes over here, yeah. yeah, dude, I love that life. I yeah. love that. That's why I they'll do. go right, do so it at no altitude. They'll go. They'll go yes. train at altitude yeah. for a specific amount of time yeah. leading up to it. But I they s- also have people like Sammy. She does all of the cooking, as far as I understand. You know, and like you're doing your right, own the cooking. Team. And and people that work in or or a big thing for them if like their competition, like kind of, you know, they they win a competition. That's their annual salary. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, from There's which no yeah, fucking, Matt doesn't have another job. Right. Like, that's yeah. That's his job. It, well, <laughs> and he has he has endorsements and things like that that of come course, along with it, but there's sure. no prize. And this isn't no. That's this his, isn't me complaining, but yeah. there's nothing like that yeah. for us. What's well, it? It's a niche. It's, uh, right. I mean, like the adaptive athlete parts, exactly. like a niche. Right. Of but look what's at, kind right. of already kind of a niche. The one percent yeah. of one percent. But or like look at like people watch the Olympics. Special Olympics is a thing, but nobody cares. I'm not yeah, not nobody, but it's just and so it's like it's like um, men's World Cup versus women's World Cup, and the right. women are like, we demand to be paid equally to men. It's oh like God, the fucking the yeah. audience yeah. isn't there. The audience yeah. isn't there for adaptive athletes. So it's but it's this weird thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I'm trying to fucking. 
balance it out. And we're, we're, we're making changes in the business life to structure things. My goal is to be able to like three months. A year. I love that soul focus life. I love it. Um, don't have it right now. And that's okay. We're working towards <laughs> Maybe that. Maybe won't ever have it with kids now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. <laughs> but, so. but, but like, but that's different. I can do family things. Okay. But it's just like the, the if, 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 if my full-time job is competitive athlete, and my full-time job is owner of five different businesses. That's that's a lot of full-time jobs. A lot of full where do you Where do you fucking put your focus? You know. Yeah. Um. So, but I think I think like I think I think I'm doing all right. Clearly. But <laughs> I think I think one August I would really like to shut down my activity on the businesses and just like really because it's a selfish thing. I want to enjoy this training cycle you know and the competition this is this is this is the one-on-one duel for it's it's a title defense the title defense it's a title defense i'm the above knee champion yep in um rush club or whatever they call themselves now they had to change their name oh did they i'll figure it out but i you know i haven't focused on it, it doesn't matter to me and actually i haven't told you this yet oh, location God. might change Oh, cool. Is it like Hawaii or something? An- Guam. Anaheim? Ooh, I'll go oh. to Guam. Do, do you have any interest in going to Anaheim? I do not have an interest in going to nope. Anaheim. What? Anaheim? California? 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 Yeah, yeah. But isn't it by the coast? I mean, uh, I mean it, it, everything is what you make of it. All Anaheim. of California well, is by the coast, yeah. right? I guess. Yeah, I, I suppose. Yeah. Well, it <laughs> might, I like it San might. Diego. St. Yeah. George. St. George yeah. was way cooler than Anaheim. Why are they changing it? Just... I feel like California is more locked down you know, than Utah is. Isn't imagine it? they'd have to pay more taxes there's on a, having the stuff there. There's a, it's, you know. California is wacko right now. Yeah. Wacko. But anyways, it might like change for administrative reasons. You know wacko. how you know how it goes. But it doesn't matter. All that shit doesn't matter to me. I got a competition. And so, yeah. Um, talk, I mean, talk your about location should matter to you because that's more sea level versus... I think St. George was a little more elevated, but anyway. Yeah. Either way, well, like Marcus is flying from fucking Florida, so I heard like yeah. advantage Derek already. You know, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, um, I wanted to talk about sleep. You got any notes about sleep? I don't. Yeah. Okay. So sleep, sleep is a fucking huge. It's fucking important, and 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 it's weird because. In our culture, it's, you know, like, it's, it's cool to be like, fucking hustle day and night, work hard, never sleep. Never, you know, if you're not working on your goals, you're not working on your goals. There's just like sleep isn't seen as this active thing you do to benefit yourself. It, it seems like this necessary thing that you got to fucking, or this comfort or yeah, something some, like that. Some but, people look at like, that's where they're able to sacrifice is the, mm-hmm. is the sleep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it's yeah, like or, it's a and luxury, sleep is also like sleep a, is also really hard. So I'm I'm fucking great at sleeping, and I'm protective of my sleep, and I'm proactive about my sleep. But these are all things I learned in treatment in like 2010 and 11. Like I was I was in this 30 day inpatient program, psychiatric program. Yep. And uh, one of their big things was teaching us how to sleep. And and I'm gonna share things I do, um, things I've learned areas I can get better, but, um, just the, the, the mindset and the approach behind sleep is, is, is weird. The only, the only note I truly have on sleep is, so I referenced that book, uh, last week that Christy Ashwanden wrote. Um, and so she has done tons of research on what could work for recovery and things like that. She said the only magic bullet is sleep. That's Mm -hmm. it. She said you can use all these tools, all this other stuff, cryotherapy, heat, you know, infrared saunas. Yeah. But sure, the only research that has, seems to be working is um, better sleep. sleep. Yeah. yeah. So Sleep's when you quality. repair yourself. So, sleep, yeah. Yep. So sleep. So sleep is when um, mostly we release growth hormone, and that's fucking. Yes. I mean, that's like that's you're literally active. Sleep is an active thing that you can do and give a shit about and get better at yeah. to 
it, so it's better for building muscle. It's better for endurance. Better, it's better for fat burning. Better for your brain. Yeah. It's better I mean, just, for But everything. like, if we're talking about fitness and our body and our performance, how we mm-hmm. look, how we perform, sleep is fucking, and, and it's yeah. like, do you get six hours? Do you get eight, eight hours? Somewhere in there. Somewhere in there. I actually, I think I get six or seven hours about, I, I'd say I average seven hours of sleep. You know, I'll sleep from like 11 to six. I used to, I really like getting up at five, yeah. but with, but I like getting up and going. Yeah. I don't, I don't like yeah, getting, gets up and I'm literally. out of the house in 30 yeah. minutes. I get it. Yeah, I do yeah. that. I'm but with 15. the, with the kids that changes things, you know, um, yeah, child we, care here starts at seven. So <laughs> mm-hmm. we rotate our, our morning workouts where Talia will wake up early. She rolls out the house immediately. And when she's coming back in, I'm up and then I go do my run after that. And Smart. yeah, it's, it's different. So actually like I see some, uh, it's funny, man. Um, watching some dudes on the internet who don't have kids try to tell us how to live our morning <laughs> with kids and they're like, oh, my morning routine is I, 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 you know, I, I get up and do this and do this and do this and you should do this. I'm like, oh yeah, my morning routine is I change fucking shitty diapers. Yeah, I fucking poop. try to entertain my kids poop. a while. Yeah, poop, <laughs> poop. Jack started telling us when he poops. Yeah. Nice. He just says poop. They're not even eighteen poop. months yet. It's a big deal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I actually realized I need to start like having them watch me pee mm-hmm. more. That's yeah. how they learn. That's how. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a weird like, thing to yeah. like be like, mm-hmm. oh yeah. Yeah, you kind of mm-hmm. have to see this in yeah. order to like. So okay, here's now they're be. grabbing their penis now mm-hmm. a lot more. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So so you know, <laughs> I was just just looking. Like, these are all things I know, or it makes sense, or like some. It's it's literally one of the necessary when we're talking about recovery. It's like giving our body the things we actually need. Sleep is a need. You will fucking rot and fucking die without it you know so you go back and look in time look Mm -hmm. did did cavemen have foam rollers and cryotherapy or float tanks like Uh, yeah i don't think so. everybody's like want to be a lion i was like you know what lions do during the day fucking rest motherfucker they sleep at night and rest during the day and when it's time to hunt they they fucking get their hunt on you know that goes with (laughs) nutrition so (laughs) i forget who it was but he was on the joe rogan podcast love joe rogan and he said we are not cows grazing all day as far mm-hmm. as nutrition goes. We are yeah. lions. We have this fucking go, go, go lifestyle that is not conducive with our fucking yes. species. But so I looked up a couple, I mean, just, just, uh, these are things we know, but uh, you know, like just perusing around the internet for some bullet points, you know, just to, um, um, you know, it says, I found this things like many studies have tested the effects of sleep deprivation mm. on athletic performance. Effects include slower muscle recovery, changes in mood, increased level of stress hormones, including cortisol. Cortisol is your fucking enemy when you're trying to lose fat. Yeah. You know, if your stress is high, your cortisol is high, it makes it harder for you to lose fat. That's why like food philosophy tells you how to is, fucking that's, calm that's the fuck stress. down. That's a stress. Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. Stress, stress hormone. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. So like if so you're cortisol, stressed. So cortisol is good. We need, we want cortisol because it keeps us heightened. It's our... Fight, fight or flight, flight response type okay. shit, you know, but too much of it is, is bad. Is detrim- so it's like a is, lion. Is very bad. Yeah. Like is the zebra coming yep. to get you? Yep. So here's, lion? here's a, here's a, so like this is the double whammy in recovery, mm-hmm. sleep deprivation, decreased glycogen synthesis. So you need that fucking, that's what ignition does is replenishes those, those glycogen stores yeah. mm-hmm. for recovery. Yep. You got less of that. It's just, you know, in, um, um, uh, so, you know, like, uh, uh, your your endurance suffers, and here's an interesting one: um, effects of sleep depri- deprivation, um, increased ratings of perceived exertion. So you actually feel oh. like you're working harder. You oh, think, I felt that before. Yeah, you weird. think you're doing ninety percent, but you're actually at sixty. Yeah, or, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, because you're more tired, and you know, so you're like, yeah. oh, I've been working for thirty mm-hmm. minutes, and you look at the clock, and it's been and, six. And what does that do? It starts that negative feedback loop. Yeah. You know, uh, where where it's like, you you start, you're just like, you're just like, why do I suck? Fuck, I suck. Shit, I suck. Fuck, I suck. I'm done. Mm -hmm. I quit. Yeah. And then you're just like beating your shit up. That was my run this morning. Really? Yeah. Dude, I I got caught in a fucking negative feedback loop, huh? Dude, that's one of the best things anybody can ever, like, if you can recognize when you're stuck in a bullshit mind game, negative feedback loop, that's when I'm just like, whoop. Yep. 
step away from my brain. Dude, I wasn't looking is, at my time yeah. and I was like, I was like, oh man, I'm nailing it today. Like mm-hmm. I just, I felt like I was faster. I felt like everything was going good. And I got to my mile and I looked and I was just like, what the fuck happened? Mm-hmm. That's 20 <laughs> seconds slower than the last <laughs> one. Yeah. So, so sleep in our culture, it's, you know, it's just the same thing with cooking food. It's almost like not a good use of time, but it is a fucking one of the best uses of time. Yeah. Two of the best uses of time. Cooking your food, eating, you know, cooking your healthy home fucking food Whole and sleeping. Yeah. Sleeping. So I have you go down. I I I had to learn. I have a routine. Just like mm-hmm. everything I do, I I've really had to like Derek proof my existence you know there um so my 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 bedtime routine starts if everything's going normal it starts at eight o'clock and i start my routine with the intent and goal of being asleep by 10 to 10 30 that's when i want to go to sleep that's Good way night. late for me yeah so i'm in me. bed i know oh, oh, <laughs> sorry <yeah. laughs> but i'm the i'm i'm the person who can stay up till three in the morning and then get up at five and I can just run on fumes and I have to protect, like Jocko. I have to protect myself from that. <laughs> yeah, I don't it's want not to good for that. me. And it's not it, that like, like in, it's not conducive to my goals. So I have to be active and protective of my sleep. So in that, and, and that's kind of what I've learned in treatment, you know? And so here's some funny tips is, um, do, do you, put much time or thought or effort into how you sleep no like what do you mean how i sleep like pillows blankets it's changed i mean over the last two three years because of pregnancy and like now figuring out yeah i mean it depends yeah so one of the cool things i learned in treatment and i've used it ever since is um And it seems like, so when we were in the army, it's just like, shut the fuck up, go to fucking sleep anywhere. All right, cool. I can do that. I can live that life if I have to. But if I'm trying to be good at sleeping, it's all right to um, incorporate some comforts. So one of the cool things I learned that I fucking do every, like I don't let my joints touch. So I'm a side sleeper. I sleep on my side. And obviously being an amputee, it's really weird. I need, I needed pillows between my legs and I need like hugger pillows. So my arms, I don't, I don't. It's like my pregnancy pillow. Yeah. The yeah. position I sleep in fucking matters. If I'm doing like this, I'm cramped up and tense and tight and things like that. But I put some pillows in between and it opens me up mm-hmm. and now I'm just like comfortable. And so. Would, what do you what like do you we like? need a fucking extra extra king bed or something so, like a shack we share, bed we share when my when my arm hangs <laughs> over the bed it like it pulls my asleep. fucking bicep <laughs> and my <laughs> shit is tight and i hate it there's other do you know there's other king beds mm-hmm. i've heard so i I've only seen. thought it was like there's king like bed family and then size Cal- california. california king but then there's like alaska king and then there's like there's like six other ones alaska must be bigger it's bigger Whoa. Yeah. They're all bigger. They're gigantic. Maybe we mm. need, does Ghost Bed have one of those? No, <laughs> Maybe they it. can make us a custom bed. Ooh. It's just like an arm. So it's like a regular shaped bed, but then a place for my arm. But yeah. when I was pregnant too, they encouraged us to sleep on our left side because that's where your heart sits. So it increases your blood flow if you're sleeping on your left side and that's the part that's down, I guess. I don't know how that would increase blood flow, yeah. but that's what they told me to do. Mm-hmm. But I never thought about how I sleep, yeah. but Dr. Rhonda Patrick, who I love talks about, um, lighting before you sleep too. So I think she says like 5 PM if she's going to bed, actually, I think she says around 10 PM, she has red lights in her house that she turns on. And then she has like the dimmer on her phone. My, my, my it's stress and anxiety important. is heightened. If I, yeah. if I'm on my phone actively after 8 PM, yeah. But like 8 p.m. is when I start shutting down. And I can, so she like, says that it's important for your circadian rhythm. You have to you have to slow down. You can't just do like a marathon run and then go to bed. You have to slow down. Yeah, because so that's what what is what like the biggest thing in treatment is like I was I'm the guy that can stay awake thinking about all the things that I need to do, all the stresses. That's how I am. Yeah, but so. 
But you, you fall I don't get good sleep. Right. Well, maybe, you know, like it's uh, work on it or, or things like that. I you would know? love to. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> <I know>. Stacey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> work or like on so, it. Something okay. for you to work on. But that's that's fine. There's 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 things I need to work on too. Like I'd really like to get rid of, you know. Sleeping pills? Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I don't take like sleeping pill like narcotics. What do you take? Um, For a, the, the longest time, I've taken two Tylenol PM and 10 to 20 milligrams of melatonin. And I understand that that isn't good in and of itself. But again, I'm, I'm not there yet mentally where I, cause like, so three nights ago I didn't take anything and I was just like brain fucking racing. And I was like, I hate this feeling. Yeah. I hate that. And and I have a lot of mental control, but that's a fucking hard one to slow down. Yep. Mm -hmm. I use Benadryl every now and then. I'll take a take Benadryl. That's what, that's what, that's what Tylenol out. PM is. Yeah. It's just acetaminophen and yeah. uh, Benadryl. Yeah. So I'd like to kick that someday. Um, I do take half as much as I used to because I, I can't. So um, imagine. I, I can't sleep. So I take one Tylenol PM, 10 milligrams melatonin because um, I can't sleep as deeply. I need to be yeah. able to melatonin hear the boys and things like that. Yeah. But the and so is the t- you know the Tylenol PM isn't a fucking narcotic every sleep day aid. for years it's, it's, and years right so yeah right you know nothing's good it's like, like I, that yeah so to you, where you're like, dependent I need to, upon it I need right. to kick tobacco and yep. sleeping pills but I'm just not there mentally yet it's not safe yet because and so actually you know I've had conversations with people about this over the years and it happened fucking two days ago I actually went into GNC. I go into a GNC like once every two years. Again, if you're one of the good GNC employees, cool. But fuck, man, are so many of them just like dumb and annoying as fuck. And I had some, you know, this dude, he was like 210 pounds of chewed bubble gum. (laughs) And I was, you know, I was like, I'm just looking for some melatonin. And he was like, he was like, how long have you been taking melatonin? I was like, ah, 16 years. He's like, you didn't, you don't come out. He's like, if you, if you regularly take melatonin, it'll fucking reduce your body's natural melatonin levels. And I was like, all right, well, um, I still want to buy some. Are you going to cancel this product? He's like, no. I was like, well, then I don't need fucking natural melatonin <laughs> if I'm just pumping it in there, right? He's like, well, I guess you got a point. I was like, I'll tell you what, man. <laughs> you know, like I've had this conversation with people. I know the Tylenol PM and melatonin, but it fucking, I would rather take that and whatever maybe possibly negative side effects will come along it's worth it to me to fucking sleep six, six to eight hours a night because it's so important for my not just we're, like we're talking about muscle benefits and fat loss and things but like my mental health mm-hmm. yeah my mental health if i i can you know so i slept like fucking three and a half shitty hours the other night when i didn't take any of my i didn't take any Tylenol, pam or melatonin yeah. And how was your day? It was, I got through it. Right. But but I got through it knowing that I was fucked. Right. You know, I got up. I was like, I'm fucked. But it's like, so we're going to get through this day and I'm fucked. And then, and it was like, it was Monday night. I was like, I have to sleep tonight. I have to just full fucking sleep. And I slept like eight hours. Cause like, dude, you know, it's like, oh shit, why am I depressed? Why am I being so negative? Is, am I doing something wrong in my life? Is something wrong with me and Stacy? Is something wrong with me and Owen? No. I didn't get enough sleep last night. That's it. And being able to recognize that and not project it into other areas of your life right. is huge. Yep. Another thing they taught me in treatment. Yep. Sometimes you just didn't get enough sleep yep. or you didn't get good sleep. Mm-hmm. Like that's your only problem, you know? I think it's funny how much that's overlooked, like how much sleep plays into it to well, all we're kinds not, of but stuff. It's like mm-hmm. the, you know, the, the, the human tendency is to cast blame on other things or people outside yourself. And it's, right. not, it's not a big deal. Like, yeah. and we can't always get the perfect or optimal night's sleep. Yeah. Nope. But we but we can get a real relatively <laughs> decent level. Right. Six hours is not asking too much, yeah. you know? And if when you I care was, about it, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I was just saying, if you care about it, you can definitely get that sleep. And it's important you should care. Because mm-hmm. like, you know, the physical benefits, benefits and the mental health. And I think we've done an episode about depression. Mm-hmm. Um. Sleep is a huge part of my mental health coping mechanism. Yeah. You know? I remember going through a bunch of sleep classes when I, after I got blown up and, and wasn't sleeping and was on all kinds of pain meds and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. But there were actual like, I, and I remember like I got signed up for it. They're like, Hey, you're going to this starting tomorrow. 
And um, I was like, man, there's like classes to teach you how to sleep. What, what the fuck? Yeah, but there are. It's yeah. Weird, and it helped. Know? Yeah, <laughs> it helped what, a lot. What were you gonna say? Sorry. Uh, it it just also plays a role in digestion and like as far as that whole system works too. So mm. another podcast uh, with Dr. Rhonda Patrick, she talks too about how that really plays a part in a lot of shift workers mm. um, and their yeah. schedule too. And they just generally are overweight and um, overstressed. It's like our friends who are like one, one, you got fucking you're married with kids yeah. and one of you has a day job and one of you has a night job. Yeah. And when those friends tell me, they're like, oh, things aren't good at home. I'm like, yeah, but you guys aren't bad people. Yeah. You have the wrong schedule. It's a, a right. bit and, preach. You know, like, and a so preach. Yeah. all of us are on shift work mm-hmm. and it depends how long it is, but it's always, you know, between uh, six and eight weeks long. And then you switch to a different shift and a different shift. And then nurses and doctors are like every couple days on a different shift. Oh, yikes. That sleep is yeah. not good. So you and never actually and adjust to whatever so you're these on. These people's Cops, jobs mean yeah. a lot. Cops, military, medical, it's firefighter, life or people death like, for and a like, lot so of if these you people. have one of the, like if you volunteer for one of those, we did it in the yep. army. Oh, we, we volunteered to s- suffer that yep. for what we're doing just part yeah. of the but job. in regular if you don't have and a majority of people don't have a job like that or a schedule like that but still suffer poor sleep yeah. you know and um um yeah that's interesting that it, it, I, I didn't know that it helps with digestion but it yeah. makes sense that it helps with fucking everything so it's, people- it's your body you've you ha- it's it's real rest yeah real it, true rest it's been studied. your body's working like a motherfucker yeah. when you're sleeping you're not doing nothing people you know people see it oh, as, right. as, as, as uh, unproductive you're sleeping unproductive yeah. like no your body is doing a fuck ton of shit right now releasing growth hormone yeah. bone repair muscle repair clearing your fucking clearing your mind yeah. you know like yeah. dude is this a memory or are we discarding that you know mm-hmm. all sorts of shit is going on while we're sleeping right and we need that to yeah. be happy and healthy. So it's fucking weird that we don't care more. Yeah. It's like, oh, I, it's so one of the big things is like at eight o'clock or, you know, the common saying, it's like, don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today. Mm-hmm. Like, fuck that. When it's eight o'clock, don't do today what I can do tomorrow. Don't even, I don't even think about it. I can't. I have to stop thinking. There's always going to be something there tomorrow mm-hmm. waiting for you. Mm-hmm. So, or more you could do that night where it's like, nope, I'm in my, I'm in my go to sleep process. And I like to do things like I like to, um, they need to put friends back on Netflix. I don't just, I don't mm-hmm. just, I don't lay in bed for me. I don't get in bed until like nine forty five. but I start my get ready for sleep process at about eight. And I like to do, I like to listen to calmer music or I've started listening to podcasts um, you're not supposed to do anything in bed right. except for sleep. So there's, there's some rules like that, that I, yeah, that's, you know, they say don't fall to sleep with a TV, but yes. I only sleep. I have to drown out like the ringing in my ear and I have to distract my brain. I hijack my brain from running off. So that's like your white noise mm-hmm. because Derek has seen friends like 86,000 times. Mm-hmm. That's how I'm with entourage. Oh, yeah. entourage! The office, my, yeah. But that's um, how I am with forensic files. I like to, I like, <laughs> I like to do the dishes, or fold some laundry. I cook, I cook another meal about nine o'clock every night. Kind of like mindless tasks. Mm-hmm. It seems like yeah, but okay. it's like so they're mindless. But it's also like they make me feel good. Like when when you do stuff around your house, yeah, that's what it is, you know. And then I eat at night because fuck going to bed. On an empty stomach. Fuck that. And it's like people are like, oh, to be, I'm on a diet. I can't eat before bed because I'll get fat. Nope. Nope. Not, it's just not true. That goes back to that time restricted feeding. It's just not true. Yeah, it's not. It's, it's just not true. Yeah. In like, fact, some know? people do carb backloading too, well, yeah. where they'll eat everything right before bed and they like tend to lose weight. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the science is not there for that. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah. But, um, um. Yeah, the, my 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 sleep routine. I'm so protective of it, and I can overcome deviations. I just really, if if I don't sleep well, I know I'm gonna be stressed out the next day, and maybe I'll have to tell people that 
And I'm like, I'm, I'm just like, I'm running, I'm running manic today. Mm -hmm. And it's not because of anything. It's just, yeah. I, I need, I need sleep and I'll get through my day. I'm not a, I'm not like this pussy is like, oh, I didn't sleep good. So I'm just going to stay in my house and be miserable. It's like, no, we get our shit done, but being protective about sleep. Yeah. Um, yeah. One quick thing. We'll move, we'll move on and talk about water, but a mm -hmm. big fucking, a huge thing. If I'm, uh, if I'm in bed, I'm trying to go to sleep and my mind's going a million miles an hour. It's funny when you catch yourself and you're like, holy shit, I'm flexing. Tense. I, oh, th yeah. I thought I was laying, yeah. but I'm flexing. Yeah. There's a, 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 do you ever do belly breaths? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So belly breaths, two belly breaths. It's amazing how many people don't know about belly breaths. We do them in yoga. Yeah. So before you sleep, Feel so there's, belly. there's two, two little tricks here. Just a belly breath is like in through your nose and really expand, really get that air in your, your stomach belly. Yeah. and then release. And then do that again. You can feel your belly mm -hmm. inflating. Blow up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a belly breath. And so that just fucking relaxes you. Yeah. Relaxes you and then actively. So do those belly breaths. And then from there, just try to clear your mind. And it's like visualization. Yeah. It's like yes. I often picture myself at a lake. And like we, I've been doing the meditating, the calm thing. Yeah. So they tell you to focus on something. Yep. I can't focus on my body. I, oh, I, you don't do like the I focus fo on your breath. I focus on the sound of the water. Yeah. And so now I can hear that in my head. And so belly breaths. If you're, if you're, if you catch yourself, your mind's racing in bed, do some belly breaths. I just, I do too. And that seems to work for me all the time. And I'll sit there for a fucking idiot. I'm not perfect at this. I'll lay there for 40 minutes, mm -hmm. mind racing. And then be like, oh shit, dumbass. Hit right. some belly breaths. Yeah. And then a really cool trick I actually learned from a uh, a woman while I was at Walter Reed uh, Army Hospital there. Mm -hmm. You know, I was having trouble with everything, you know. So it's like you do a belly breath with your eyes closed. And as you're breathing in, you roll, you look up. You roll your eyes to the top of your head. And then as you breathe out, you slowly bring your eyes Ooh, back down. Weird. And you I'll think about your whole body getting lighter from head to toe it's a really fucking weird sensation it it works so we did it's that super cool similarly in a class not the eye thing but we would from head to toe tense our you know we would crinkle our foreheads and then we would relax and then move down to like neck flex your neck relax so you would tense muscle uh groups and then let them relax all the way down. And you generally, I didn't get all the way down to my toes because I would probably be asleep by then. Mm -hmm. So you're tensing actively and then you're releasing. So you can feel the release after the tension. Yeah. That works. When I was in that, um, it's funny how these things work. When I was in the, that um, inpatient psychiatric program, every morning we would do some sort of guided meditation type thing in the first few days i was like this is fucking dumb this is a waste of my fucking time why the fuck am i here and but every time i'd fall right the fuck asleep because that was that's what it was it's was supposed to relax and i was like holy shit <laughs> okay holy fine it works shit. this shit fucking works i feel like as americans we are just tense people mm -hmm. we really are it's like go 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 well, it's busy, so busy. funny when like when you start a meditation you know owen and are you still doing it uh, I, I'm not doing it as frequently as was. I He had some interesting it's, it's ones. It's necessary for a while. Yeah. But it's just like, you know, um, application without constant calculation. Right. You know, you can't be in treatment forever. Like meditation is, is cool to do and learn. But it's so funny when you go into a meditation, you're like, all right, I'm nice and relaxed. And then like 90 seconds in, they're like, all right, now relax the muscles in your face. And you're like, oh, Shit, I've been sitting here fucking flexing the exactly. whole goddamn time. You yeah. think you're relaxed, but you're not. I think that's why I get migraines. Yeah, I honestly. mean, your headaches, you, yeah. you, need, you should look into those because yeah. it's Belly really... Belly breaths help me, actually. Really? That yeah. is something that does help me. It's fucking weird how sleeping benefits our body, breathing benefits our body. Yeah. Um, weird, let's weird. let's talk about water. Mm. Water is a funny fucking thing. Interesting. Mm. Water, hydration. This, this one... I don't, so I, I only drink water and I, I, I put crystal light in my water. Okay. If the maltodextrin say, in and crystal light is the thing that takes me out. It might be. All right. I've you know, tried to get him on my liquid IV, 
But oh, I've heard about that. Oh, it's so good. I've been I've been on the Crystal Light for fucking twelve years. On like, the Crystal, g- g- yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been on the Crystal. Been for, on that Crystal. Yeah. <laughs> what you mean, like meth? No, man, Crystal Light. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but it just fucking blows me. Like, I don't do energy drinks. I don't do pop. Don't do Gatorade. It 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 just it surprises me how much people drink that's not water i don't understand it it's water like it's we eat twinkies and stuff right too, but like so. you know so <laughs> my, my thing is like if the, if there's something important to do for your body it's drink water i mean and it, like what do we look for when we look for life on another planet what's the one thing we're fucking looking for water water that's how fucking important is there a water source water is to life you know without without water as far as we know there's not life you know and like so our bodies you know your hydration level plays a, a a role in your fucking mood yep sometimes you'll be crabby or irritable and you think it's because your wife or husband did something or you think it's because it's a work thing no you're fucking dehydrated that's why you're irritable, you know, and you, you could handle these situations better if you were fucking hydrated. And it seems like a no brainer, but you fucking ask 10 people and seven of them are going to say, I don't drink enough water. So do you have any, how much water do you drink a day? Mm, I would say like two of these 32, yeah, 32 ounce nail jeans. That like that I'm strictly taking in like solely water from, right. but of course like there's water in our food. Like what yeah. are you talking? No, I mean like just drinking water. I would say two of these. So that's sixty four ounces. Yeah, and I know you're supposed to drink your weight in ounces. There's like there's like general rule of thumb. Really? I think so. It, dude, how much water are you Especially drinking during a day? the summer, oh, Mr. Kidney Stones? That, yeah, so yeah. I'm I'm probably getting like. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to drink your weight in ounces. I'm probably getting. Or is it half your weight? It can't be your whole weight. Let me That's look. Insane. Maybe it's half your weight. And no, I get I, I get between probably like two and three hundred ounces of water a day. Really? Yeah. So my trick is, or one of my tricks is these. I get these fifty ounce water bottles. Yeah. And I'll either get these or I have a bunch of Nalgene has fifty ounce water bottles, three a day, and that's how I know if I'm getting my water in. You know, okay. uh, I drink three of these a day. So that's 150 ounces. If you put, add on top of uh, like my pre-workout, intra-workout and post-workout, that's another 50 to 100 ounces right there okay. um, typically. So about, I would say on average, 250 ounces of water a day. And if I, if I'm below that, if I drop below that, I feel it. We need, we need a conversion. It says straight from Mayo Clinic for the average adult who lives in a temperate climate men need approximately 15.5 cups a day or 3.7 liters. And then women need about 11 and a half cups or 2.7 liters. So I would say I get that. Two point. So this, so 50 ounces is a 50 ounces is 1.5 liters. That was not a reaction to that being a lot. That was a reaction to me realizing there's zero chance of me figuring out that math problem. Oh, Oh. (laughs) yeah. I'm like trying to think how many ounces are in a cup. Okay. How do I? Yeah. Yeah. No, I go ahead. So I drink, I already, I already drink a shit ton of water, but now we're in the fucking Las Vegas summer. Oh yeah. It's not enough. No. And with the, with my output. And so it depends on your output and things Mm -hmm. like that, but you should have a high output because like we believe in exercise around here, you know, you're sweating and things like that. Um, so this was one of the most interesting things that Christy speaks about in her book was hydration, because I feel like, especially in the military, we literally had breaks that were hydration breaks oh, yeah. during and training. And you would be very proud of what yeah. color your pee was. Hyd- exactly. Hydrate or die. Oh my God. Right. Every single stall yeah. has a color chart. Yeah. But then, but and now, you, but now there's things that say the color of your pee exactly, don't, don't exactly. determine your fucking, whether you're hydrated or not. I don't believe that. Uh, right, I right. do. I do. I mean, there's like it, it's it's affected by what you drink. But stuff. just because you you're hydrated taken... doesn't mean you're healthy. That's right. what I okay. think. Yeah. So just because your pee is literally see through clear yeah. doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to be OK today. Yeah. And I also think like clear pee can signal a lack of sodium or something. I don't know. I so, don't know. So but it's just like 
there's all these things about it. It was like, right. drink more fucking water. So, hey, like, you just talked about it. Sodium. So that's salt, which is electrolytes. So you're losing a lot of salts when you're, you have a high output. So if you're working out a lot, if you're rucking a lot, like we had hydration breaks all the time, but they were almost always water. But water isn't doing a whole lot for you if you're losing a shit ton of electrolytes. What you need is Gatorade or some sort of electrolyte, you know, replacement. Well, there's electrolytes right here. What was that shit or we had to salt, drink in salt. airborne school? Yeah, the sodium packet things. It was just like yeah. that you put in your fucking canteen. So yeah, there, what was yeah. that called? There's like electrolytes in the liquid IV that I have. So that's why I really like the liquid IV. But um, yeah, that's that's the difference, I think, when we're talking about hydration is water versus another source. But now when you talk about that, then you're getting into, oh, what are the added sugars in Gatorade, Powerade, yeah. Scoobity Bop? You know, yeah. so that's the difference there. Yeah, but. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't consider, you know, a Gatorade to me is a treat right. or so I, I drink that shit when I'm sick. Cause you know, but, but what it, like I drink We're water to over. hydrate, you know, and it, yeah. and it's funny. Like, so hydration also plays a role in pain, pain management, being hydrated, like keeps your joints lubricated. Yes. And when you're fucking dry, you're tight, yes. you know? Yep. So it's like, there's, there's obvious positive benefits to when you're hydrated, like, um, you know, water is the thing that carries nutrients to your cells and gives your cells energy. And then water makes uh, like, we're working off electricity here, right? It's a fucking good conductor for that, right. you know? So we yep. perform better, yeah. we feel better, but people aren't drinking enough water. Yeah. So, but careful with that. So this is what she talks about in her book. Good to go is, um, she went back and looked study after study report after report because you hear, you know, so-and-so football player was, he just flopped over dead on the field. Oh, dehydration was a factor, blah, blah, blah. Okay, th that's the key word. It was a factor. Right. It was not the one thing yeah. that killed him. Somebody she said she never, right? yes, yeah. she, <laughs> she did not find, swear to God, a single report. And dehydration was a factor. Yeah. yeah. She did not find a single report where dehydration was the only factor for someone's death. So she says, in fact, drinking too much water, there are multiple reports on people drinking too much water and oh, yeah. that being the sole reason why they've d died. Yep. So it's called dry drowning. Yeah, that happened so to a guy the first time I went through base training yeah. in the 90s. Like, because they used to force hydrate us. Exactly. They still do. Uh, when I the, went through. Not the same way. Like they used to, we used to sit there and have to pound fucking canteens oh, yeah. in front of them. Sear school, yeah. everything yeah. for sure. They were like, drink, 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 drink. Yeah. And, and now I'm like, die. oh my God, yes. Yep. So it's called dry bit. drowning. But, dry but that's, that's got to be so fucking, okay. So that's one of the things. It is you very you, difficult. It's However, so fucking rare that it shouldn't be brought up. When I'm talking to a person, if, if, if when, sure. I, when I'm talking to people, most of them aren't drinking enough water. Yes. And their question is, well, how, uh, what if I drink too much? I was so like, how about you it. start drinking the appropriate fucking amount? Yeah. Right. And then we'll worry about too much. It's like, yeah. like women who are like, you know, I, I would work out, but I get too fucking, Toned. I don't want to get too muscular too yeah. fast. That's exactly like, how oh, I, I just, feel. I go from zero to a minute. Yeah. I don't want to get too, that's why I, I'm only like, running. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to lift weights because I'll get too muscular i don't want to get too, <laughs> I don't get too bulky yeah. <laughs> i i understand your logic and your thinking however i i wanted to bring that point up because it is something that's talked about and yeah i so she says that you can generally listen to your body as far as that goes if your body is telling you you're thirsty you need water you don't need soda you don't need alcohol you need water so literally are you thirsty right now okay drink water and you should be fine with that. And that's actually what Mayo Clinic just said on their same Fucking, website. So, you know, we're talking about this. I think two nights ago, two days. So that, that so that, oh, fuck, dude, the, 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 oh, my gosh. I think I strained my, my groin mm -hmm. because of Your what? my groin. Groin. Like groin. Okay. Say it again? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you said growing. Yeah, growing. Growing. Okay. Was that, is that the Minnesota yeah. accent? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I really actually didn't know but what I was saying. But I think I did it because I fucking let my get myself get dehydrated the day before. And that, so like, I, I, I talked about the, the shitty night of sleep I had yeah. two nights ago. I was, the, uh, that was a Sunday night. And so Monday was rough. Um, Monday evening at about eight o'clock, I felt like I was going to fucking throw up. So Sunday you didn't hydrate enough. 
If you're talking about that's happening on Monday, because hydration's like the night before is like yeah. when you're hydrated well, that's, for the day. That's, yeah, so that's what that's what yeah that's what um that's that's another important thing. Like what you drink, what, what you drink today determines your tomorrow. Totally it has nothing to do with today. No. Like, like, you just you're won't fucking, be thirsty you're set, today. You're setting yourself up, but right. I I was I felt sick, dude. Or like I I couldn't focus. I was getting dizzy, and I felt like I was gonna throw up. And I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" I was like, "Shit." I think I let myself get dehydrated. Yeah. Because like, and or temperature really spiked too around the weekend. Oh, but, yes. but like, so here's here's the you know um, I'm human. We released my food philosophy. Yep. Stress and anxiety through the roof. Yep. Yeah. Busy as fuck. Not I'm not instead of instead of like so I chew tobacco. Yep. And that helps me maintain or manage my stress and things like that, which is an unhealthy. But it's I, like I'll take care of that when I fucking. One thing at a time. It's better you know? than heroin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, um, so I have to, sometimes I'll be like, hey, you can have a chew after you finish this bottle of water. But sometimes I just go, 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 go. And I went and I let myself get dehydrated. I was like, fuck. And I was like, I'm not sick. I'll, I got, I let myself get dehydrated. Shit. You know? Yeah. And then I think, and then it makes sense that I got a little bit injured the next day. My fucking, uh, I, I pounded water. Um, but it takes time. Yeah. It takes time. You know, that's why I like watching these shows. You and I have been watching that alone. Ooh, I like if you want to see the fucking effects oh my gosh. of malnourishment and dehydration, the guy getting watch, cramps. watch naked and afraid, watch oh, yeah. alone, yes. watch these survival. If you want to, if you watch if, their face, yeah, their if, pain. Yeah. Level, if like, you need to know how important good health yeah. hydration and fitness is or yeah. if you can learn a lot about the body by watching those shows Actually, too because yeah. those motherfuckers know survivalists have to know intake mm -hmm. and then like this amount of work if i start hacking this tree down it's gonna take this many calories out of my body which means i can't do that much work later all of that stuff yeah that is and the guy true. kills a moose he's like hey this is good this is a lot of food but it's a lot of calories exactly right, to get it yes. i you know? spent a lot to mm -hmm. get this yes yeah. true and that's and we i you know we mentioned like lions resting like it takes mm -hmm. lions are super protective of when and how and who they fucking hunt yeah. because they're ex because they're 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 only they're, they have like a 10 percent success rate yeah you know yeah. and so they have to be careful about because right. they're burning calories they're burning calories i think i'm gonna let calories. that buffalo yeah. walk a, and walk so away. how nice do we have it we're we you know we like it we burn we're calories existing cows grazing but when, in when, the we're, field. when we're talking about fitness we're like willingly um burning calories using calories to improve our health and fitness like what a luxury yeah we have as humans to just like make this choice it's not a survival thing it's not a survival game we're trying we're just doing this to be better not stay alive you know so it's like let's do it right if you're putting the time and effort into exercising put time and effort into giving a fuck about your sleep put and it doesn't take long to figure out how to keep yourself hydrated and once you fucking learn it and once you learn tricks you um you're good to go like me like my three 50 ounce bottles of water it works for you mm-hmm Yep. And I don't have to think about it. It's just, yeah. it's part of my routine. It's part of my routine. And that's just, and I, and sometimes I fuck up like I did a couple of days ago and I'm pretty sure that's why I like felt dizzy. That's like, yeah. I, I, I wonder if it has something to do with your headaches sometimes or a, contrib oh, a contributing, yeah. you know, Stacey, hydration or sleep Stacy. Uh, well, both, but yeah, mostly both. hydration. I think Yeah, she gets headaches like work, especially when she works out. Heavily and like, so we talked about harder. scaling back her workout. She yeah. works out hard. You get migraines. I get both. I get, okay. maybe that get. plays a role in your migraines. If you, cause you don't get enough water. No. Yeah. You know, actually, so I get migraines. I would say once every three, four weeks now. Okay. Um, but what does help me is the belly breathing. I'll chug, chug, chug water. And just two, three weeks ago, my PCM gave me a prescription, which is not a prescription, but to melatonin. So she has me on five milligrams a night right now. I asked her the science behind it. She didn't know, um, but she thinks it has something to do with inflammation. So uh, melatonin could decrease inflammation, which then would um, 
Which doesn't make sense to me actually now thinking about that. See, but anyway. So when you start getting a headache, you start chugging water. But at that point, it's already too late. Oh, That's yeah, why it's like way too late. This, yeah. this, you're, tri- the, you're trying the, to the triage. The routine I have yes, yeah. true. is a proactive measure. Yeah. And like, again, like I, I don't fuck up often, but I do yeah. fuck up. And there's yeah. a time where your life is go-go. Yes. And you can't. And then you have to, you have to rely on you know, your intestinal fortitude to yep. get you yeah. through something. You don't just lay down and fucking die. Yeah. We're talking about doing our best to set ourselves up for success. Right. So, you know? And I wonder how better, how much, but you, you probably need to double your water intake. I would have, I'd say at least. Yeah. Yeah. If you tried something, it's like, you know, buying, buy, buying the bottles us, of yeah. water every day is kind of silly, but it all, but it also helps me. I think I do like probably, and this is way on the less side. Um, how how big is a, a shaker bottle? Twenty, 20 ounces, twenty two yeah. ounces. Yeah, so I probably do two of those a day. Dude. Plus plus however many Gatorades I have because I'll have like no, a Gatorade. See, dude, like, and so actually, when I was in um, yeah, high school, I typically we, water down my Gatorade. It's I like so them watered sweet. down too. Yeah. yeah, we did a experiment where you c- and I don't know how true it is. I don't know how good. Gatorade and Powerade are at hydrating you long term. They're delicious. Well, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to fucking, you know, you uh, drinking things just for taste, or are you trying to fuel your body? Well, the Gator- <laughs> so Gatorade was was developed by the University of Florida, which is why it's called Gatorade. I listened to this recently. Yeah, and it's so it was developed specifically to rehydrate Their the football, football players mm-hmm. who were out there in the crazy humidity. Mm-hmm. Um, So I trust that there's science behind it. Now, whether or not they have over the time swapped out ingredients for like, or or like, like, so like, it sounds like, like maybe, maybe Gatorade during it's the salts and the sugar It's a quick. It's, 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 it's like a supplement. It's their compound. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a supplement, but you have to have the baseline of water. You got to fucking drink your water, water, have your Gatorade, but drink your fucking water. You know, I, I, it's, it's got, it makes sense that it would make you feel. Yeah. So much better. So I think another interesting thing that she brings up in her book, Good to Go, is um, that sport a lot of times literally comes down to like mere seconds. Like if you're competing against whoever it is, you win because you beat this person by seconds. Mm -hmm. And it's such a small amount of time So if you think about all of the things that you could be doing to get a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better, those little things count. Mm -hmm. Sport is so dependent on all these little things. You know, and not, it's not a, not a boast or brag or something like that, but that's what separates me from my peers. Like we're all in the gym. Yeah. What are you doing outside of the gym? And I just, I really put uh, as I get older and smarter and better, I put more emphasis on it, it, what I'm doing outside of the gym. And mm-hmm. it's and it's been an, a learning experience with the kids and the businesses. Oh. Yeah, that was um but um <laughs> it's 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 it's, it's like if you if you work out <laughs> the, yeah. Oh, that stinks, dude. Uh so let's let's say the average person works out for 90 minutes. Okay. And their drive to and from the gym <laughs> is 2 hours. That's that's 2 out of 24 hours. What are you doing for the rest of that twenty-two hours? Yeah, and and it's and it's all um, it, these things take time. Like being, it, it you learn about how to sleep, but then you just fucking sleep, and you go back to the things you've learned in times of struggle. You learn how to hydrate, and you develop routines, and then you just it's just second nature and stuff like that. Put some time and effort into, yeah, your recovery because it, it's going to help you. These are like, it's just like we said, just to, you know, just to drive it home. Sleeping is something you can actively give a shit about that'll help you mm-hmm. accomplish your goal. It's not a fucking waste of time. You're not doing nothing. Your body is doing a shit ton of things. It's you're building muscle. You're, you're fucking burning fat. You're releasing chemicals. You're rebooting your brain. And the best thing is it's free. And it feels so fucking good. <laughs> it, it does so not fucking cost good. $600 for mm-hmm. a Theragun. Well, hey, it, every the, every little thing counts. Well, I, that's yeah. what I'm saying too, though. But the sleep <laughs> yeah. part is free. I got, yeah. But if you're doing all these extra things too, mm-hmm. hey, that's another little leg up. Yeah. Pun intended, well, that's, what, that's a Derek, funny thing. Yeah. <laughs> on the other person. Yeah. Like, it just is. Well, that's what's funny is, like, people, a lot of people will be like, well, I use this cream. Mm-hmm. I use this supplement. It's like, well, 
do you have your sleep and water down yet? Mm-hmm. Right. How about your food? Like, do you have the foundation set? Basic human and then once necessities. You get, so that's what, like, uh, separating me from peers. I have the foundation. And then adding the little the little things, these nice things, mm-hmm. salt baths, Theragun, massage. I can do that because I've got nutrition, sleep, hydration. It's your bedrock. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then you just continue to add. And that's what makes you better and better and better. But don't use fucking... If, you, if you're going to use like a CBD balm to treat pain, before you do that, be like, hey, am I sleeping? How much water am I drinking? Am I hydrated? Yeah. Because these are the real underlying fucking yep. things. And if the answer is yes, you're good at sleep, you're good on water, you're good on food, go ahead. Keep adding to go your to fucking your, your recovery toolbox, yeah. you know? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, yeah, so that's a lot about recovery. It's fucking... Recovery is important and it's amazing. A lot of these things go good. Yeah. It's it's arguably the most important. I think uh, banana hammock. Oh, hey. That's code. (laughs) That's code for if you like this podcast and you like want to support it, you can do so by going to DerekWida.com and checking out our workout plans, our training programs. We got $15 shirts up on there. All the shirts. 15 bucks. All t-shirts, 15 bucks. That's it. So with shipping, 22 it's bucks. 22 bucks. That's a good price range. Dude, and they're awesome shirts. They're There's, I know. They're like dude, the I, comfy. I get dude, I I get so fucked up on this cuz it's like our shirt quality, the t-shirt quality is so nice. It could be a $30 t-shirt. It's I when I buy 100%. t-shirts from people that I like on the internet, yep. I spend 33 bucks a shirt. I do. And then I get them, I'm like, "Fuck, our quality is nicer than this." Yeah. And it's half the price. It's half the price. Are we selling ourselves shirt? Yeah, but we're doing the right like there's the We're thing. doing it. Like our training programs are fucking cheap as shit. Yep. What? We're doing the right thing. Training all training programs on like, DerekWida.com are twenty bucks. Yeah. Except the White Away is more expensive because that's a lifelong program. And well, they're not that they're not that much because they're twenty percent off if you use code Saturday for being a listener of the podcast. Savage Saturdays. Yeah. Saturday. Code at, Saturday at checkout. Type it in there. Twenty percent off of training programs and food philosophy. Not T-shirts because T-shirts are fifteen there's, bucks. There's no margin. There's not. Yeah, We're so, selling as cheap as we the can. Margins are funny. So like the sh- the shirt is fifteen bucks. That means us we we make about Four bucks. six dollars a shirt six. that we split between like three people. Yeah. So <laughs> make I make, a, I make a buck a shirt. But that's the it's it's hey. the it's the right price for a t shirt. It's what I want to pay for a t shirt. Yeah. I don't want to pay thirty bucks. That's, that's and that's why that's why we did it. That's why we made that decision because yep. it's like. I looked at it and I was like, I don't pay this much. Well, I do, but I don't like it. I don't like it. And I don't do it often. Nope. You know, once or twice a year, if somebody really hashtag influences me. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I was talking to Josh. I, get it I was sometimes. talking to Josh Bridges today. Mm. And I said, we we're just. <gasps> we're, Actually, his coffee shows up today. Oh, really? It does. So we got more coming. Yeah. I accepted an offer from Josh Bridges. Oh, dear. Um, I, I told compete him. compete against um, him? Good no. luck. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd compete against him in like a bench press competition, I think. Uh, Maybe that's the one area. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know. But um he's a savage. Yeah. I fucking so I and I told him straight up and I used your 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 uh your words and I was like, dude, we got fucking hashtag influenced we by should. your fucking influential <laughs> ass. They got that they got they got themselves a, a coffee company, good, good dudes. dudes. Good dudes coffee company. Okay. And um you know us. We're we like we're like Black Rifle Coffee. That's it. Through. We're friends with the guys and stuff like that. Just but I just but I, it's That's like Josh Bridges, Rich Froning, and I think Dan Bailey. Uh huh. And those it, three. It's good dudes. Co- I like these fucking guys, yeah, especially like they're I, good dudes. I, I chat. <laughs> I chat. Really I get are. to chat. Like, and I feel <laughs> it's it's um I feel privileged to be able to chat with these guys because they're people I look up to, like yeah. Dan Bailey, Josh Bridges. I've never talked to Rich Froning, but he's Rich Froning. And to be honest, I think I like Josh and Dan more. If there's a hierarchy of my love, high, yeah. <laughs> highly functioning yeah. athletes. It's like you know, if I got ten love points, it's four, four, or three. Are they on your DNR? Four, four, yeah. Um, Josh Bridges might be on your DNR. It's the right height for me. I bet Bert Coots. <laughs> Is Bert? Bert's probably on your DNR too. <laughs> you know, Doc. Uh, me and Tom Brady just can't work. He's too tall. But oh god, mm-hmm. <laughs> he just can't work. But he's a yeah. buccaneer now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, we got. Um, he, you know, he offered to send some stuff, and I was like, man, we usually say no, but 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag influenced. We hashtag yeah. love you. Yeah. Got influenced. You're on my DNR. Yeah. Um, that's going to do it for this week's show. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a couple things. Hope you start to sleep better Ooh, and recover. Yeah. Hope you fucking get hydrated and feel hydrated and feel good. Burn fat, build muscle, be a nice person. Yeah, it, be it's, kind. It, these are things that are good for your mood too. Recovery. Yep. It's funny how 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 much um, we can accomplish when we give a shit about our body. That is true. You know. Yeah, we're so busy worrying about other job people. and making money and other people's problems in the yeah. world when um, we feel so much better. Three when foot we, circle. Um, yeah. Go ahead and be a little selfish and give a shit about yourself. You'll 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 be happier for it. Um, as always, love you guys. Cheers.